This is Dapu7. This is a video that I had promised to some of my subs out there. Me and Casey had been trying to put this together several times, talking about all of this information. We had a lot of problems and weird glitches, but I'm going to give it a go and cover this Mount Hermon. Again, I talked about it in the past many times. You can see its proximity here to Damascus on the map. And its exact location is key. It was... I believe 1666 of all years, Louis XIV had declared the meridian points. And from those points, 33 degrees east of that meridian and 33 degrees north of the equator sits this exact spot, Mount Hermon. And what is important about this, even biblically, is this is where the fallen angels landed. This is an area that the UN swooped into and they established a base up here. This is the highest peak in all of Syria. All of Syria. All the ancient land and ancient Damascus and everything there. This is the highest peak. 9,232 feet above sea level. Also, the slopes of it extend down into the Golan Heights where Israel was occupying a lot of the territory and in that region there is the highest peak in all of Israel it's 7,336 feet in elevation highest peak in all of Israeli controlled territory now back in the 70s Israel and Egypt and them got in a fight and Israel and Syria got in a fight and the UN swooped in to this peak and established this base that they call Herman Hotel a UN peak, the highest UN basin of all the globe. They can see in all directions for miles. And biblically, this being the place where Og had control, where the fallen ones landed, and also the territory of the ancient tribe of Dan. All of this connects right to this very area. And it's very interesting because a lot of biblical characters came to this area, talked about this area, referenced this area. And I think the most important thing to me that stands out about all this is they state time and time again that this is where the Nephilim landed. When you hear the stories of the giants on the earth in those days, this is where it all emanates from. This highest peak that they won't let no one up or around you can only imagine what kind of monuments are sitting there, what's buried, and what they don't show people. Turkey is littered with it. They found the throne of Zeus there. The Germans took, took that brick by brick apart back to Germany with them. Shows the, how much importance that had to them. Then you have all the ancient stuff that's littered all over the place. The oldest temple in the world, Gobekli Tepe, sits on the border of Syria and Turkey. All the ancient mystery there. Of course, these are areas that are in constant war. And I can't help but think this is the exact quest that uh, Hitler was on and that I believe the other militaries are still on around the globe. He went to the Tibetan monks. They told him, go here, go there. Talked about the ancient stuff of northern Africa that was buried. Antarctica. And these places he went to and visited. And they established their base in Antarctica. I mean, we've I've talked about that in separate videos. Everything that's gone down with at the polls, the battles, uh, Operation Paperclip, how Hitler didn't die in the bunker like they t try to teach you in school in a book, how it didn't go down that way, and then how all the all the German scientists, top level, all the top technology that they had with all their aircraft and all that came to the United States, and they established that base in Antarctica, and right now it's still a place where. Every flag is flying, yet no one can claim any control or domain. They don't war over it. They don't fight over it. They don't send troops down to go to, to battle over it anymore. Ever since that battle that took place between disc-shaped aircraft with swastikas on them and allied forces, where the allied forces lost that battle. And what's interesting is when you look to another documented military event, of Admiral Byrd, Operation High Jump, going over the North Pole. 
he came across an area that was dry, 70 degrees, that should not have been there in the middle of the oceanic depression and was encountered by disc-shaped craft. And he, this had nothing to do with Nazis or World War, but he made one detailed quote that they had swastikas on them and that the, he was brought down into a city. This was part of a military documented operation, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, at both poles, we've seen this going down. So we look at the roots of what they're doing. I believe they're trying to find this ancient technology. That's why we went to war in Iraq. You're talking where Nimrod was, where they had built the Tower of Babel, ancient Mesopotamia. That was the first place they stormed into in the past couple decades. Okay, and then there's stuff in Afghanistan too. It's not just about the poppy fields there. Ancient stuff in those mountains. And of course, when it comes to Egypt, Israel, Syria, Turkey, that whole area, there's ancient stuff is littering the whole landscape. The massive stone that protrudes up out of the sands in Baalbek, they can't move or create today. And this connects right back to the stories of the giants. And it even stated that Og's bed was 15 foot in length. That's how big these individuals were. Now, when you go reading through the biblical text, I believe they make it clear, very clear, that on the earth were giants, Nephilim, this seed that came down. And these are the words they put. They came in unto the women of this planet. Then they bore children that became kings and the men, the men of renowned stature, strong, strong men. They had a line, a lineage that came from this, the mingling of this serpent seed. Do you see now the fallen ones intermingling with mankind? It was plainly written. And what is also interesting is the earth, obviously, that got flooded out. But as is stated in the scripture, immediately, out of nowhere, after the flood happened, they were here again. They returned. They didn't get rid of all of them. And it states that, and they're here to this very day, is what I'm here to tell you. In these fallen ones, you need not wonder anymore of who or what they're worshiping. This is it. They are fake Jews. They are fake Christians. They are fake Muslims. Their true religion is worshiping this. These ones that set up this pantheon of all these gods after Lucifer came down and set up his encampment here with the fallen ones and his demonic fallen angels. As he stated, his mission was to rise higher than the stars of God. You know, and these were the things that some say Nimrod was looking to do in building a tower that extended into the heavens and that also extended higher than flood waters. But then this is when something crazy happened. It all gets destroyed. And then the people's language gets construed. You're talking people that all spoke one language. All of a sudden, they have to speak different languages and they're scattered across the globe. Who and how? Who took these people from point A to point B to scatter them and to introduce a whole new language into all of them? You see, some say, well, it is written that God Almighty did it. And others would ask, well, how? Were they just lifted and transported? Was it physically? How physically? Then you have the talk of gateways, portals, stargates. The ancient stuff that I believe existed, even Thoth wrote about it off of Atlantis, the Emerald Tablets. See, when you spend years of digging into this stuff and you read in and you, you take in all this information, you start to see how these stories correlate and how some of them overlay, even with the same characters, but just with different names. Even when you're looking at Muslim to Jewish or Christian texts, they have the same storylines, just with different names. And what is important here is one of these places was named after Pan. 
and Pan was half man, half goat. I mean, that's how they state he was, and I believe that this is how a lot of things were. When they depict Anubis in Egypt with the dog head, I believe these things really existed. I believe these giants, these Nephilim, really existed. It's not just a fairy tale. They know it. This goes right along with the whole story of Lord of the Rings. Solomon was given a ring. He was the Lord of the Rings. He was the master wizard. He was the master magician. He was given a ring by Michael. Michael is the one that casted Lucifer and his fallen angels out of heaven and down to earth. And where did they land after this huge event? Right here at Mount Hermon, where they have set up shops. So now you can see the importance of those that are worshiping them. This was their landing point, their port of entry onto this planet. And back then, these sites were set up as a worship to Baal, Baal worship. Which it, there you can see the connection now with the ball gates that they've been trying to set up at NYC and London and everything. And throughout this, the Muslims came through and took over some, some of these territories throughout time. And from being called the city that it was dubbed after Pan, uh, Pansia, they, they didn't have a P in their language. So they replaced it with a B. And it is Bansia. So it kind of construes the whole thing if you're trying to go back and, and figure this all out and look at the connections. You have to realize the manipulation there and what's happened over time as different cultures have come in and construed things. Things have shifted. You have man writing these, these books and translating over time. and You really have to start to look at the whole thing, lay it all out the table. When you do, you start to see the places of key importance. Now, Yeshua, Jesus, came to this area and had made statements on this and actually had said, here is where I'm going to declare that I am the Messiah. When he asked those around him, his disciples, of what they thought of him, So they said to him, some say you're John the Baptist, some say Elijah, others that you're Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Then he said to them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter had answered and said that you are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. And Yeshua answered him and he said, blessed are you, Simon, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father, the spirit who is in heaven, did so. And I'll also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loosen on earth will be loosened in heaven. And then he commanded his disciples, and you need to pay attention to this, he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was the Christ. So this area is where all this took place. This is an area of extreme spiritual significance. And not only is it the place where the fallen angels landed, but it's also the place where Yeshua made the proclamation that he is the Messiah. Right there on Satan's stomping ground. Where they landed, where Lucifer and his minions descended. They all knew this. He knew this. And thus far, you, you come to this point today, they definitely know this. And I believe that they're trying to get into Syria, to go into these other ancient places, into Damascus, Baalbek, all these other places that they can't get into, to dig and try and find what they're looking for. Now, if you look up in the Encyclopedia Britannica, what Herman means, it means forbidden place. It's very interesting. 
And Moses wrote that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, and they were fair, and they took them as wives, all of which they chose. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, the men of renown. That is out of Genesis. You see how this all connects back to this place and the importance to them. And this is where I believe the Antichrist himself is going to try to establish this foothold and, and rise up from th this area. And this is the spot where they fell. This is your connection to the 33 that all the Masons carry in their Masonic rituals. This is everything to do with the occult. And this is where they landed. Michael casted them down here. It's interesting that that same Michael is the one that gave Solomon the ring. And Solomon was able to use this ring to control the spirits, the 72 angels and demons of the Goetia. He used them to make the rope, to cut the stones, and to build the temple for the Lord God Sabaoth that he was building it for. And it was Michael that was key in both of those in different scriptures. It's very interesting. And when I go reading in parts of the Quran and different, uh, different parts of Muslim scripture, and I come to read upon the parts about the Dajjal, the Antichrist, so to speak, as they called it the Dajjal, that he will not be able to enter the city of Mecca. There is a city built on the outskirts of Mecca. Go to Google Earth and look it up. It has been built. It is a huge palace specifically for this individual. And it is sitting there empty awaiting his arrival. It is interesting that as it states, he will not be able to enter the city of Mecca. But he will be destroyed on another ridge very close by that you could see from that palace. And also there on Google Earth. But what is the most interesting? is that they do not state that it is Muhammad that destroys the Dajjal. They state that it is the son of Mary. So I want you to realize the significant importance that Yeshua carries even in other religions that they don't want you to realize or see. And I find it interesting that when Solomon is using this ring, he calls forth all these different angels and demons. Beelzebub was among them, said he was the last of his kind here. He was viewed as the king in the lower 4D, this dimension that they're connecting with, that is here in the same realm. Just like the air you breathe, but you can't see. In the same realm that your ghost and spirit, and everything operates in, that they're holding occult rituals, trying to tap into lower 4D, having communications, using jump gates, to hold these meetings in the spiritual realm. This is what they're doing. As Solomon was using the ring and commanding them to work in the name of God. Now he found out the hard way that you can get burned with magic. And that if you try to use it for your own deeds, for your own good, to take out your enemies, it can backfire. Karma's real. And you have to know the whole rules to the game. Solomon was stripped of his ring and sent to wander in the desert. And he learned a lesson. He fortunately got the ring back and was able to continue on. But I believe that when the Knights Templar went and they discovered this, what they want to tell you was the chalice and all this other stuff, I don't think that's the case ever. I think what they found was the treasure of all treasures, Solomon's ring. The one thing, the device that allowed him to communicate and command these spirits. It's what gave them their power and made them kings everywhere they went. And it's exactly what happened. When this knowledge was known, this is when all these secret societies started to spring up. These are the secrets. If you read the morals of dogma from Albert Pike, they teach that the one they worship in there is called Lucifer. He is the same one that says we'll take the Christians and the Muslims, wage war, make them wage war against one another, and then we'll send in the atheists to clean up shop. 
they are worshiping Lucifer openly in their books. Okay? Look at Aleister Crowley. Okay? The descendants of him are the Bushes. He ripped a hole and in, punctured a hole in the space time, connecting into 4D and let an entity into this world. In, in, a, in a gate that he could not close. This is fact known. So why all these dark occult individuals worship him and look up to him. Mr. Crowley. Yeah, you see why it's there. Because of that. And he was connecting with this entity. This little demonic looking entity. It looked like a bit of a gray alien type-ish. But without the big bug eyes, because it's in my opinion, those are space suits. Space suits. The best depiction is fire in the sky. Watch it. You'll see it. You'll see that their features and their eyes are a lot more like ours than you think once they take off the spacesuit. And that's exactly the type of entity that he depicted that he was making contact with and that was allowing him to do all this stuff. 9-11 was a massive occult ritual, ladies and gentlemen. This is why you saw the entity's faces emanating out of the smoke. This is very real. It was an occult ritual. Okay, this is what they're doing. This is a world stage. If I can get you to this level of understanding this, you will finally see when I tell you that this world is a stage that they are worshiping that Putin and all these other SOBs. They know this. They know this. So this is who and what they are worshiping behind the scenes from all of you. All of your governments have sold you out is what I'm here to tell you. They know this. They're playing along with the game. They are lying to you. They are fronting as Christians, Jews, Muslims, and they are worshiping the fallen ones. It's who gives them their power, their technology, the seat that they sit in. Do you see now? This is what it's about. If you can grasp this and you can understand this, then you can see the bigger picture. Then you start to understand they control all sides of the war. The Rothschilds controlled both sides of the main war. Went to France, went to Germany, funded both sides. Fast forward to the day they created ISIS. They're using ISIS, yet our troops are signing up to go fight an enemy they created. It's sick. If you can understand that and wrap your head around that, you are now awakening. You are seeing this world stage that is pushed on Zionist Jesuit command. The lineage of the serpent seed that is here. And they were about, in my opinion, to usher in the Dajjal, the Antichrist. I believe that within the decade, and it may be here sooner than you think, that this individual is going to take the world stage big time. Heard all the talk before, all through the Obama administration, Obama's the Antichrist, all the people always swear that these other people are the Antichrist. I'm not going to say that that guy didn't do some crazy stuff. We had him worshiping, hailing Zeus in reverse in his opening speech, all the other demonic stuff he did. He is hip to this. He is worshiping this. This is what they're all worshiping, you see. This other one, this Dajjal Antichrist, in my opinion, will be of the richest of the blood. This is why they intermarry. So I said it in my song. This is, they know the secrets of the blood. If they can keep a high concentration of the serpent seed there, they are bringing the spirits back in to their bloodlines. That way they're not coming out here as a spirit coming up used again in this life. We are used and lied to. You're not being told the truth of what's happening. You see, if you look at the story of Isis... Osiris, Osiris achieved four, fourth density, something no one else did. He peaked into this, this next density. Thoth wrote about this. It ticked, set off. Set and his dudes chopped him up. Isis put his body back together and had to make a golden phallus. She made love to him as the story is told. What she did is she extracted the DNA and she bore a child, Horus. But this is the key. When Horus was born, it was Osiris. It was his spirit entity. They even state that with full memory. Full memory. 
It is what they call the process of the father becomes the son. And this is the process they use again and again with the purest of the blood of the serpent to bring things forth. And see, you can't even begin to understand how this is all happening when you're never told the truth from the root. And what's interesting is Thoth, Jesus, all these other individuals that came along have, t- have spoken on all of this openly. I think it's not until you look at all of it. It takes time. It's not going to happen overnight. It, you know how many days and nights and weeks and years I've sent to sit and watching and taking in information and reading books and digging into this as deep and as far as you can day after day after day. It takes time till you finally come to a point to where all of it starts to come together. And where it all leads me is back to the square one where evil entered this place and started to cause chaos so bad that they had to flood this place out. And this next time, I'm warning you, it's going to be by fire. Can't forget, he comes like a thief in the night. So everyone that thinks all these things and how it's written, it's in my opinion, truly, if one's going to come in like a thief in the night, no one's going to have a beat on it. It could happen tomorrow. Two men will be standing in the field. One will be left. One will be taken. This is what is written. And some call that you know, the rapture. This and that. I'm here to tell you, this is a true battle between good and evil. The good, the bad, the forces of light and darkness. You have to remember that within every bit of darkness, there is light. There is a yin to every yang. There is a mirror to everything. I believe they're on a quest for this ancient tech. All the things buried all the things that Thoth spoke about. He said that this planet was set up on a natural power grid off the ley lines where pyramids were like generators, huge power generators that once plated and coated with the right stuff, they supplied power for everything around. This was taken off grid. He explains when a male dominant force came here after a battle in the heavens and they stated Mars. These entities came here to Atlantis and at first everything was okay but over time things changed you see there was entities that came here after a battle in heaven this matches the same story of another battle in heaven where Michael was casting these entities out of heaven you see this is where all these stories start to correlate you start to see there's something to it and I can't help but think their landing spot is key This area, and we know it, everything that I've just shown you up to this point, the location, the fact that it's marked there at the perfect 33 by 33 spot for them. And there's so much ancient history there, yet to be seen, of Baalbek. Benias is actually Panias. It was named after Pan. Pan was half man, half goat. This is why I said I believe Anubis had a dog head. I believe the giants were real. The Nephilim were real. If you're someone that believes in your Bible or any of the religious writings, what's, if any of them, you have to look at what they're saying. Because if you want to say chalk this up as fairy tale, then you're saying that all the religion is a fairy tale. And I know some of you out there are saying that because you, some of you don't believe in anything. Some people are atheists out there. And I personally can't see how that is because something created all of this. And it's in my belief that the Most High, created the life force of spirit, of energy. Okay, similar, and this goes back to Nimrod and the Ajiji. The Ajiji were a spirit force that were here that didn't have a body to live in and asked Nimrod to fasten bodies for them to live in. He would, they would uh, grant him treasures and all this other stuff. Going back to the spirit entering the body, Nimrod didn't make the Ajiji. Do you see? When Nimrod declared he was God, he could could give life and take it. He brought two men out, he let one free, and he killed one. It was a poor attempt. 
Then he was told, Will the true God, the Most High, makes the sun rise in the east? I want to see you make it rise in the west. When he could not do this, he stormed off in furious anger. And that's the point. He is not the Most High. And so many have aspired to try to be that in the name of Lucifer. Satan, his exact mission was to ascend above the heavens, above God. My point is this. The Ajiji appeared, and that seemed to be the natural spirit life force that is within all of us. That is the essence of God Almighty, the Most High that created all the stars and stardust and everything throughout the cosmos. The thing that gives the life in butterflies, in you and I, in every creature and every plant on this planet. That energy, right there, cannot be created by any of them, only manipulated, lied to. And as you could see right there, Nimrod thought he was God, but he's not. None of them are. And obviously, this Dajjal that's coming on the scene is going to be a false man of peace. Now, man, I tell you what, if you thought there was a division, come the election with people voting for this or that. Let's go back to Obama and whoever it was. Can you now? I'm not even going to talk about the recent ones. Go back to Gore and Obama. All the people that were voting this way. Or all, now you're all seeing the atrocities they've done. Okay. You need to see it up front because I, I feel like this man's going to take the stage. This entity's going to take the stage and try to sweep people by storm. And they're just going to fall in love with this character. It's the only way it's going to work for him. He's going to have to represent himself as some true man of peace that can bring true peace and do things by example. And when you start to see these things, you better watch out because you know it's not the Messiah. And knowing that in your heart, you know game's on. I can't help but feel that 2017, always have felt that 2017 is a changing point. I believe later this year, the sign is marked in the heavens as, as the woman sits there with 12 stars on her crown, the moon at her feet, all of that, all, everything aligning, yeah, that happens this year. Also, the only full solar eclipse that you will be able to see fully in a long time and for a long time to come happens later this year. And here in America, you're going to have the best spot. And actually, if I drive about an hour south, I'll be in the perfect line of path, and I look to do a live stream of that event um, right from the heart of the path. Solid darkness right from the heart of it. If I can get down to it, I'm going to live stream that. It'll be a unique event. So keep your eyes peeled for it. I don't know what else to say at this point, guys. I've, I've fought the fight. I will continue to fight the fight till the death of me. There's nothing more important than getting the message out. Because I don't want to die and be a spirit on the other side waiting. Just sitting there saying, damn it, I should have done more. But get what? My memory wiped. And regurgitated because I, I didn't open my mind, open consciously to what's really going on. And I do believe when Jesus, Yeshua says that love is key, I believe that it truly is the key. Because I believe that it's the one thing that Lucifer lacks. True love. I believe this is why they depict Apollo standing on the heart. True love. He don't have it. And without it, he can never leave this domain. And without it, he can never be the complete almighty God he mocks it so badly wants to be. He can never do it without it. It would have to take a true transformation. And then if he transformed from that and ascended out of there, well, if you have a place called Earth where you're trying to test souls, it almost seems that someone is going to have to fill the role of the bad guy and some people can't seem to understand that. They just want to be in a utopia. But I think that this life is about learning and lessons. And you've been given free will. I look at it like if we were to create any kind of life and we wanted to know what's going to be the best to take. Well, you got to let them choose for themselves. Okay, let's give them free will. Okay, we give them free will, but they got to be tempted somehow, right? Okay, now they're tempted. There's good and evil in front of them. Now it's a choice. Now they can walk the path. They can make their own path. Problem is, is a lot of us are lied to about true history and everything else. But if they walk the right path, it's simple. 
As soon as their body drops, we throw their soul on the scales. If it tips to the good, we're taking them. If it tips to the bad, they're going back through till they learn and can ascend up or they can stay there forever. They can stay in that lower realm being used over and over again. Do you see what is happening? You have to reach a point consciously in awareness in your mind, heart, and soul of what's going on here, who you are, where you're going in life, and what your actions do because karma is very real. What goes around comes around quick. This is why I say walk righteous. It's all we can do. The most of you listening to me, you come from the gutter just like I do. You went through a system where you relied through school your whole life and then you get out and then you hit the system where you have to get a job. You're a slave to the system. Mommy, daddy, why you got to go to work? Why we got to do that? Well, you got to go to work because you got to get money. Why? Because it's the slave system. Like Thoth said, this was set up on a power structure around the globe. Naturally, they took it offline. And now they control you with this oil, fiat, petrodollar currency that ain't worth nothing. Not even backed by gold. And this is what they're doing here on this planet. It's a big game. It's a big, it's a big game. But it's important that you know who's pulling the strings, who they're worshiping. And this is the root of it all. When it comes to Mount Hermon, Mount Hermon is where they touched down. It is where Yeshua stepped he spoke and declared what he was. Things to come. Many, many different scriptures speak about Mount Hermon. And the areas right around it, the hillsides, it is very key. And being the tallest peak in all of that region, militarily, it is key. And you have to remember, the ancients would go up here and worship Baal. The higher the peak, the, the more important it was. So, I hope this helps bring things full circle so people can understand here. You have to remember, Matthew 24, we'll go 37. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days of Noah, before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark. And they did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will be the coming of the Son of Man. When two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other will be left. Watch therefore because you do not know when he is coming. Because if the master of the house had known the hour in which the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. So we were warned. He also goes on to warn you specifically of what these demonic Nephilim, these entities did that are here. They intermingled and they had children and they had a seed line. And it's still here. And when Jesus was asked, why don't we go down and remove the tear?" Jesus replied, he said, you cannot uproot the tare because it will also kill the wheat. We must wait until harvest time. Then we will separate the wheat from the shaft and we will get this serpent seed out of here. For good. Do you see what is coming? It is. You now know. You can never say no one's ever told you explain this to you you now know so prepare it's in my opinion we are in those days we are on the doorstep things are changing they will continue to heat up rapidly beware of the distractions they cause now that you have this information know that everything that happens out here in front of you is a play it is a stage and they are using these things as a playbook literally to make these things happen. They will even play into the religious stance of things. To make things come about. So they can also fortify their belief. When they have this Antichrist take the stage. I'm warning you. There's some hectic 
things to come, ladies and gentlemen. It's just the way it is. And the only thing that I can say is we have to come together. I've been saying it forever. You have to have a righteous movement to counter this. Because it gets way bigger than fake protesters in the streets, don't it? When you come to find out at the end that the, the black pope, the highest pedophile rings behind the Vatican on Jesuit command and Zionist command are all worshiping these fallen ones, well, now you know. Don't forget it. Now you know this world is a stage. See it for what it is. And this is why I say Kluminati, to kill this serpent seed. To kill off this Illuminati. To kill off the evil. To change it. And this has been Dabu7. I hope this helps some of you awaken. Open your eyes a little bit more to what's really going on. Because the root of it's this. Mount Hermon. It's where the fallen ones landed. It's where the UN has its highest base in the world. It is where Yeshua proclaimed he is the Messiah. And much, much more. Sitting here at the Masonic 33 by 33 degrees. Maybe now it all makes sense to you. Stay tuned for more. Remember, none of us are promised tomorrow. Someone's got to pick up the torch and run with it. It's been Dabu7. And this is Kaluminati. In the name of Yeshua.